Thank you for checking out this review video for The Shape of Water. Uh, yeah, this is a movie that's been huge in uh, in the you know media at the moment. Everyone's all about it because of the Academy Awards that it's been nominated for and the fact that it only got a very limited release in just a few theaters. And now, all of a sudden, because of all the Academy Award nominations, it's getting pretty widespread release at this point. So anyway, uh, The Shape of Water, this is no spoilers, by the way. Whenever I do these movie reviews, there will be no spoilers, really. Um, and I am going to give it like a star rating at the at the end that I do out of five, which includes halves. Anyway, so my feelings on The Shape of Water. First of all, I'm a fan of Guillermo del Toro. Always have been, pretty much. He tends to do um, ha have like a certain gothic feel to his directing and the cinematography that he usually has for his films. And I'm a fan of that. I like that kind of look, that feel. Uh, so I'm always kind of drawn to his films. But also, he usually has at least solid films. One of the problems with Guillermo del Toro films, in my opinion, has always been that they get overhyped. People see them, they don't expect anything out of the film because he's not, like, this blockbuster name. He's not like a Spielberg or he's not like a, you know, a Christopher Nolan or anything like that. He's Guillermo del Toro. Like, people know his name, and they know he's been around, but if you ask your common person, how many Guillermo del Toro films have you seen? A lot of them would be like, oh, I don't even know. Like, they don't even necessarily know everything he's done. Uh, so that's one of the issues. So people will see it, no expectations, and then be like, oh, wow, that was, that was really good. So that said, do I think that uh, The Shape of Water fell into the same situation where it got way overhyped? Yes, I do. It got way overhyped. Is it still a really a quite good film? I wouldn't say really good, but it is still a quite good film. I did enjoy it. I liked it quite a bit, and that happens with a lot of his films. Um, other ones I can think of that I felt the very same about: uh, *Pan's Labyrinth*. That one got way overhyped, but it was also a very good film. As well as uh, *Crimson Peak*. That was another one. And even when Guillermo del Toro isn't like knocking it out of the park, he's at least making films that are like good. You know, like. The Hellboy movies. They're not like phenomenal or anything, but they're good films. And the one thing that's a constant throughout his stuff is his directing. His directing is outstanding. The cinematography is almost always outstanding. And the music used in the films, like I've never known anything to like mismatch or just, you know, you hear it and you're just like, Ugh. so he does a solid, solid job. So that said, for The Shape of Water itself, the biggest strengths for this film are the cinematography, the directing, the music, the acting. The script itself is not the strongest point of the film. The script is good, the script is not great. And I will say that if you take this exact same script, you give it to a different director who will handle it in a different way, it could be a bad film, honestly. So. I think all the other things with the film fell into place, well, didn't really fall into place, they were intentionally put into place in order to make it a quite good film. So that's, you know, that's Guillermo del Toro. He can take a just a good script and make the outcome of the film be more than the script is. And I think that's what happened with The Shape of Water, because when you look at the actual script, there's not too much new stuff here. It's, it is very much like, you know, film like Beauty and the Beast, you know, it's a love story, it's, you know, that's not a spoiler, like, everyone knows that based off the trailer, so, um, yeah, so it's nothing, like, crazy new, but with everything else that he does, he makes it new in a way. One of the interesting things about the film is it has a bit of a French film feel to it, which, if people are familiar with French films, you'll know what I mean when you see the film. Um, Sally Hawkins, who's the leading lady in the film, does a phenomenal job, especially because of the fact that she plays a character who cannot speak. And it is much harder to act when you can't say anything, because you need to be very good with your exp expressions, your hand gestures, everything like that. And she does a phenomenal job with, it, with that. So she did an outstanding job. All the other acting in it was really good as well. Uh, Michael Shannon plays a very menacing individual. He's very good at that type of stuff. Uh, and, um, oh no, Jenkins. Oh, why am I blanking on his on his name right now? Uh, I actually have it right here. I had pulled it up on IMDb because I don't want to forget people's names and I forgot his name. Richard Jenkins. 
Richard, Richard Jenkins did a very good job as uh, Sally Hawkins' character's confidant, like her, her only like real friend who kind of understands her. And she's the only friend that really understands him at that point, too. So um, the way he played his character, he's always been a good director, or a good director, good actor, very solid, good actor, but he's never gotten an opportunity like this film to really shine and showcase himself as an actor, and I'm happy to see that he finally got that. So maybe he'll get like a little more due that he's been owed, in my opinion. So, um... The creature itself. I know people have seen like portions of the creature through the trailer. I will say that in my opinion, it it doesn't surprise me what it looks like because it it's a very Guillermo del Toro type creature. It looks like a cross between Abe Sapien from the Hellboy movies and the creature from the Black Lagoon, which doesn't really surprise me all that much because obviously Guillermo del Toro did Hellboy and was involved in the uh, design of Abe Sapien. And then on the other hand, he is a huge um, Universal Monsters fan and like the old horror films so he is a fan of Creature from the Black Lagoon so you can see where his influences come from and that leads me to another thing that I really really love about Guillermo del Toro is he's very very committed to using practical effects in films for me when there's a lot of CGI things don't look right in certain situations if you're using CGI in like quick shots uh, where people don't have to, can't like take the time to like fix their eyes on whatever's in front of them, then usually it'll be pretty fine. But when you're doing it for an extended period of time, sometimes the CGI can just look weird and just not that good. But he gets around this obviously by taking the harder road, which is doing practical effects. So his dedication to practical effects always amazes me, and his ability to be involved with the creature design in. A lot of stuff that he does, like in the Hellboy films, he does a lot of creature design. Um, they look great. Like, he comes up with some very awesome things in his brain. And I know, I think he does, like, sketches, too, of, like, this is what I'm interested in. So, yeah, so that. But, overall, um, like I was saying, like, the story, the story is not the strongest part of it. Everything else is strong, super, super strong, actually. And that's the reason that it, it comes out to be a real you know, quite good film, like I said. So that said, out of five stars, I would give this a four-star rating. That is nice. Obviously, it's well above half, 2.5 being half. Um, but I just don't feel like it's quite at that point where it could get the four and a half or get the five star. Um, and like I said, I do feel like it's a little bit overhyped at this point. Actually, maybe a little bit, more than a little bit overhyped. I feel like it's kind of a film that people who don't usually watch smaller budget films or more indie films or more like independent films like happen to see it and be like oh my gosh oh that's amazing I didn't know that there were films with original ideas out there which actually it's not even like super original but there there is some real original stuff in there uh, including what Guillermo del Toro likes to do which is set a lot of uh, his films in the settings of like conflict times like this one's kind of done in the United States during the Cold War he likes to do those types of settings, which always is interesting for me. So, at any rate, uh, that's kind of my review of this. Let me know if there's anything that you think I missed on it. You can, you know, put some comments down there. Um, I'd like to interact about the film, whatever everyone else thought of it. Maybe out, people out there thought it totally sucked, and I'd be totally open to hearing what you have to say about it. Or maybe people out there were like, no, you're wrong. It was, like, unbelievable, one of the best movies ever you know say that as well but if you could also give me likes you know subscribe would be awesome uh and if this this video does well enough i may consider doing more of these movie reviews and going out to the theater and intentionally just going to see movies just to do reviews on so for that reason people could also make requests and i could see if i can make that happen in that case um but yeah i want to keep these videos like you know under 10 minutes if possible maybe even shorter if possible in the future but anyway, thank you everyone for checking this out. Uh, I do recommend The Shape of Water. Go ahead and see it because you can see it at the moment. And until next time, keep it brutal.